Good morning, y'all. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the mental house with me, your illustrious host, with the most, Khadija. Listen, you guys, I'm going to say something. I'm going to bring up something up that's very sensitive uh, for a lot of us, you know, and those of you who have people, especially females, who have, for whatever reason, joined the military, whatever branch, and have experienced, are experiencing um, sexual assault and domestic abuse. Uh, that is something that is very sensitive. It's a topic that really only got addressed, I would say, in recent years. Because it used to be a time where if you were, you know, even if you called the police, which is kind of like a branch of the, you know, it's the, it's the um, how do you call it, domestic branch of, of, of the military. When you would call the police because your husband beat you up, they would tell you, you know, hey, you, you know, it's all in, in fair, <laughs> in love and war, goodbye. No matter what had happened, you know, it was like the man is your king of your castle. He's the king of his castle. There would be no charges. A lot of times he wasn't even, you know, made to leave the home or any of those matters. If the police came, now, a lot of y'all don't want to believe that. They'll come there and look at, assess the situation, see if you got a, maybe even if it's a black man with a white wife, then it might be a problem. <laughs> Let me straighten that out. However, if it was a black woman with a white husband, they would definitely uh, not do anything or make him feel like, you know, you number trash down here with them anyway, so, you know, whatever. And for her, you know, who you think you are, you can get the hell beat out of you and we don't care about you. So this is really has been a, a, a behavior of the military up until really recently. I know a woman who was beaten so bad she stayed on base. They wouldn't do nothing. Now, of course, I'm talking 30, 40 years ago, 35 years ago. When I look at the time, 25, maybe 25 years ago. OK, so. Um. When you look at the military and how they approach issues of domestic violence, it has never really, really been something that was to uh, a much necessary benefit for women. And that took a lot of fighting, a lot of, um, you know, just a lot of, you know, congressional stuff. So anyway, and the reason why I'm talking about this is because I know somebody now whose daughter just was raped in the military. Oops, shouldn't say that word. Eight in the military, which is, you know, it's a sad thing. I also know a woman who brought a suit against the branch of the military that she was in because of the assault, and she was assaulted by a whole platoon or something to that, you know, to that nature. And she won a suit, of course, and the military is paying her for the rest of her life. But this was an interesting story. I knew it was, uh, um, so just weeks after she gave birth abroad in 2018, Liz Knight called Army police after she said she was physically assaulted. He had put his hands on me and was physical. Knight said, it was my breaking point. I had a five-week-old infant. I felt like I needed to protect myself and my son. Military police investigated and found probable cause to charge the alleged perpetrator with assault. As is typical with military disciplinary process, the consequences were determined by his commander, who issued a local letter of reprimand, which meant, Knight said, that it was wiped from his record. The minute he left for South Korea. 
You hear that? His record was wiped clean the minute he was set. Okay. All right. All right. Now I'm back. And with that being said, Knight was one of nearly 40 domestic violence survivors who reported abuse to the military, whom uh, the news spoke to cover over a two year investigation. Those service members, military spouses, and partners said the system is broken and the military failed to protect them. Um, the soldier is an asset. They need him. They have spent a lot of money to train him to do his job. And who am I? Said Knight. As long as I'm removed, I'm not part of the problem. Now, this is in 2021. She said, this seems to be still the mindset. Roughly 100,000 incidents of domestic abuse have been reported to the military since 2015. The military has not kept comprehensive data on the problem, so it's impossible to access the full scope. And while the Pentagon has made combating military sexual assault a priority and formed an independent review commission to address the problem. The new investigation reveals domestic abuses, a uh, similar crisis on the home front. Some survivors told the news that they felt they were in more danger after they reported the situation. And they probably were. Um, because it's that old mindset. Some of these institutions just can't be fixed. They can't be um, they can't be fixed because they've been operating in filth and degradence and uh, debauchery for too long. So the only way some of this stuff with the white supremacy, you know, it's, you know, you, you have to place it with a system of equality, first of all. And the only way you can do that is to just tear it all down. It, it, there's no way in the world you can keep putting... Um, band-aids on bullet wounds, no matter what sector of, you know, society we're talking. This is the military. Now, we don't even want to go. We can go in next, talk about the police abuse with their wives and the domestic violence and the trauma that they experience out here on these streets. I told you, and I wish I could get my friend in here to talk about what we experienced when we found, walk right into police officer snorting cocaine, a police officer in the back of his squad car. Well, he was outside in the back with the trunk open. I mean, and when we saw him, he kept us hostage and we couldn't leave the house because him and his partner sat there. And I guess, and then they kept going around because it was a commercial building. Then they start going around pulling on the doorknobs and seeing how they could get in this apartment and and probably kill us and pour cocaine on us. And, um, hey, there is branches and institutions that we respect or we have respected at one time and trust till you really get down, get down to the heart of the matter of how these institutions operate. Some of them been operating like this for hundreds of years. How in the world can you fix it? It's just like white supremacy. How can you fix these people's mind that think that they're better than somebody and they've been bred this way for hundreds of years? How in the world can you reverse that? Because they already know something is wrong. Because that's why you can see at the George Floyd um, uh, uh, death, you saw so many white individuals out there. Because some of them really just didn't even get it until they saw that. And I really mean it. And I really do believe that. Contrary to a, a, um, a lot of my people getting angry with me when I say that. I, I really believe that. Okay? And, and I, I'm going to stand on it. So what happens is, it's just like Jay Elliott said. A lot of them know, but they just plain complicit. They just can't take it. And they know that that means they're going to have to confront Uncle John at the dinner table. And they're going to have to confront, and all, and that's what it's going to take, which is going to create a civil war again within their own families. 
So when we talk about these institutions like the military, the police departments, the judicial systems, all of them was based in, in hundreds of years of them not imagining what we had to go through to try to change what they set up in that room, talking about a more perfect union. Now, you know damn well you can't have a more perfect union with all these hypocrisy, all this hypocrisy going on. I mean, here we are in 2019, now a retired master sergeant. Her name was Erica Johnson. She told Air Force leaders she was being physically and sexually assaulted, triggering an investigation by the Air Force's Office of Special Investigations, right? There was no doubt in my mind that he was going to kill me, Johnson said. But the investigation didn't go anywhere. They wouldn't even accept evidence from me. They didn't even use my statements. It just didn't make any sense. Johnson hasn't received a copy of the Air Force investigative report into her allegations, but she was told, uh, based on the findings, the commander decided to take no action. I felt so betrayed by the Air Force. It's such a severe betrayal. Now, yeah, y'all don't understand what happens when y'all join the military. And I just want you to know this. I want y'all to be totally aware, especially as females. Now, if that's what you desire and that's what you want, then that is the place for you. <laughs> okay? But if you want to be passed around, I mean, you like being passed around like a bag of uh, beans, then fine. But if you don't, then you better seriously reconsider putting your butt in that situation. Anytime a woman tell me she's been in the military, I ain't going to lie. I look at her sideways because I know she's been through hell. I know she's been through hell. I don't care what she ever says out of her mouth. <laughs> that ain't no picnic. I mean, these are women who have shown that they can, you know, go through the ranks and become great soldiers. But I... I'm always looking at women upside the head sideways when I know they've been at the military. You can get mad at me if you want to. I know the deal. And you're not going to, every woman I know, I've come in contact with, had something egregious happen to them in the military. And half of them don't even want to admit it. They go to the military and end up being, having more assaults happen to them in the military than they would have ever had. If, had they just been civilians. Army Major, this is Army Major, Leah Olowski, also reported being physically assaulted to the Air Force. I had been strangulated. He was also threatening to break my neck, bust my front teeth out. Ozaluski, who has become a champion for survivors, told her story to Congress in 2019. She had a miscarriage that she believes was a result of domestic violence. He kicked me in the side of the stomach. I flew off the bed and to the closet doors. And then he took the comforter and walked off like nothing happened. Ozaluski said that nothing has changed in the two years since she has testified. Commanders are required to tell victims about resources, send reports to law enforcement for investigation, and to ensure military offenders are held accountable. The military is supposed to track discipline um, actions taken by commanders in domestic violence cases. However, a report from the Government Accountability Office earlier this year revealed the Pentagon's, uh, revealed that the Pentagon hasn't kept comprehensive data on those numbers, even though it's been legal requirement since 1999. Now, Johnson, Olaluski, and Knight's cases did not go to a court martial, and they now fear their alleged abusers could harm someone else. In fact, they probably will. If it's not someone in the military, a spouse, it's going to be somebody in the community. The next person, he's going to kill. 
There's no doubt in my mind. He knows how to get away with it. He's told me as much. In June, the Pentagon's independent commission charged with examining sexual assault in the military recommended moving decisions to prosecute both sexual assault and domestic violence cases to an independent body outside the chain of command. Defense Secretary Lord Austin agreed. I support this as well. Given the strong correlation between sorts of crimes and the prevalence of sexual assault, yes, should be an independent body. Many of the survivors told us that they felt that they were in more danger after they reported this abuse. A senior defense official told um, CBS News that the Pentagon is making sure that they get these problems, calling um, th that they get after these problems, calling the situation a heartbreaking and maddening. This is that's what a senior um, defense official told CBS News. Our people and our readiness are inextricably linked. These crimes endanger both. And Austin, in a statement, said, we find that unacceptable. We aren't afraid to change what, what we do, how we prosecute, and how we better prevent stuff like this from happening in the future. Um, in a statement, uh, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin wrote, Sexual assault, sexual harassment, and domestic violence continue to plague our ranks. These crimes have profound, damaging, and sometimes lethal consequences for service members and our families and fundamentally impact our combat readiness. While I cannot comment on individual cases, I take these issues and the impact um, on the men and women of the services and their families with the utmost seriousness. One of my early actions as Secretary of Defense was to establishment of the Independent Review Commission on Sexual Assault and Harassment in the Military. This year, July, the Commission made 82 recommendations addressing accountability, prevention, climate, and culture, and victim care and support. So here's what we're doing. First and foremost, we are working closely with Congress on legislative proposals to remove decisions about whether to prosecute sexual assaults and related crimes, including domestic violence. That's great. From the military chain of command. Okay, so that's exactly, they're going to have to remove the decisions, and that's what they're committed to doing. So they say, secondly, the department will create dedicated offices within each service to handle specific crimes. Thirdly, we asked Congress to formally add sexual assault as an offense under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Sexual harassment, I'm sorry, because it wasn't there, and, and it's not there until the uh, legislation changes that. Finally, my team and I are reviewing the implementation roadmap for any for the many other thoughtful recommendations included in the IRC's report. Taken together, these are among the most significant reforms to our military in decades. Additionally, I have directed immediate steps uh, across the department to understand what is happening at the installation and the uh, unit, the unit level. What's going on? We are assessing accomplice with sexual assault and harassment policies and visiting bases around the world that are either showing promise to identify solutions or illuminate bright spots and re export best practices. We will continue to focus extensively on increasing prevention efforts, training and streamlining, and improving accountability. Okay, that's what they say. Okay. That's what the letter was that came out. And lastly, um, the men and women of our armed forces dedicate their lives to defending our nation and deserve a workplace free of, of home, a uh, work and home place free of sexual assault, sexual harassment, and domestic violence. President Bi Biden has placed an unprecedented priority on tackling this problem, and we 
moved out quickly to it, deliberately address it. I believe that bold action, commitment, and accountability are required, and that is exactly what we have and will continue to do. Well, that would be a first. I mean, I'm just, I'm hoping. I mean, this is not a short-term problem and will not be solved by short-term strategies. I agree. It requires sustained action commitment at the highest level to the Department of Defense. Every commander, every civilian leader, and a member of the force must be a necessary part of the solution. Our people and our readiness are indestructibly linked. These crimes endanger both. And we find that this is unacceptable. And we aren't afraid to change what we do. How we pros prosecute and how we better prevent this stuff from happening in the future. This is a leadership issue. And we will lead. Now, I want to know, because those words sound beautiful. Oh, my God, just like the Declaration of Independence. Beautiful words. But now, how are we going to put some teeth in this stuff and make it a reality? Because all of these institutions need to be broke down readdressed, re it's going to have to be if America is to continue on its way to being a more perfect union. And you're going to have to call out the people like the Republican Party. And you're going to have to call out people, and I'm not even going to necessarily say the Republican Party, them for sure, but it's not just the Republican Party. It's Democrats. It's whoever got that mindset. We're going to have to do a better job of weeding these type of this energy out because guess what? America can't afford it no more. It can't survive with it. So either the Democrats, like I said, um, and as far as I'm concerned, are they both the, and Republican artists, just different wings on the same bird, racism, white supremacy. So either we're going to replace the whole thing with a system of justice. Or it's not going to work because you know something must be wrong if you would think that the Democrats would be the Repub would be the party uh, that would listen to the people instead of uh, take all these corporate pack money and not doing anything but jumping across the bush and not getting into the meat and heart of stuff while the Republicans are constantly thinking how to kick your ass. So that's why I come to the conclusion that they're just. You know, one is to give you an illusion and one, you know, to make you think, oh, oh, I hate them. Wow. You know, so let's just keep it 100. Either we're going to commit, we're going to commit to it. Or, like I said, I can't see America surviving this. All the great empires have folded. America is going to be next because she was the greatest and she's going to fall the hardest. The whore Babylon. All right. With that being said, I'm going to get off here and I'm going to see you in the next video. Hey, you guys, listen. Comment on the video. I don't ask y'all for much. All you got to do is like or subscribe. What is wrong? Now, I know some of y'all out here because I got too many subscribers not to see nothing on here. So, y'all, y'all don't like what I'm saying at all. I know you do. Can you put a thumbs up? Do you agree with me? Am I am I crazy? Because I often wonder why am I straight? Why? I don't even get it. I need to be an alcoholic somewhere sitting around because the reality that I'm living is crazier than if I was drunk or high every fucking day of my damn life. I don't even understand it. Anyway. <laughs> okay, let me take that back. I don't want to disturb anybody that is uh, really struggling and really uh, dealing with addiction. So I'm going to take that back. All right, you guys, like the video, share the video, and please donate to the channel so we can um, move it to another level, okay, with some equipment and some stuff like that. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Who you are, and now hearing Dinesh D'Souza back in April already knew his race. Mm -mm.